Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Welcome to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. Today, I have a new guest, and her name is Jean French Blau. <laughs> so, I'm a clinical sexologist, and I and I work with clients, and I also run workshops in Singapore. You can find me on Eros Coaching. That's E R O S Coaching dot com. So today's show is all explore, all about exploring sexual esteem. Today's show is titled Sexual Esteem with French Brown, a Jean French Brown. And um, let's welcome her where we she will be exploring in today's show the elements that make up sexual esteem. She defines sexual esteem as confidence in the worth of one's sexuality. Life's events that can lower sexual esteem can include being a member of a sexual minority, religious influences, genital shaming during childhood and adolescence, or traumatic sexual experiences. Luckily, there are just as many interventions that can help claim, build, or claim, build, and celebrate sexual esteem. And Jean will be sharing them with us in today's show. So a little bit more about herself. After years of tolerating a lackluster sex life, Jean French Blau shook off her cultural baggage and gave herself permission to follow a path of sexual curiosity and adventure. With her background as a writer and performing artist, French Blau created the solo show Coming Out Kinky, a grown-up comedy which she performs in cities across the country in US to spark authentic conversations about sexuality. She graduated Come Laude with a BA in communications from UCLA and has 18 years experience with the 12-step model of recovery. She has guided individuals and groups through life-changing transformative programs, workshops, and one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Jean has also worked internationally with companies as a seminal le leader and with corporate executives to inspire people to reach their highest potential. She provides workshops and coaching on kink, women empowerment, and sexual esteem. And you can find her on sexualesteemwithjean.com. So welcome, Jean. Thank you. It's so nice to finally meet you. <laughs> yes. I've been following your work for a while. And I think uh, I first came across it because you were doing crowdfunding for your uh, project, Coming Out Kinky. Yes. Wow. And that was a while ago. And wow, that was a, certainly a coming out process. There's one thing about admitting that you like sex. That's already challenging. But to also say that you're interested in kinky sex, that's a big deal. So <laughs> I'm honored that you found me that way. Yeah, I, I really um, am very much in touch with the work of other sexuality educators and sexologists around the world. And being the only sexologist in Singapore, it can feel quite isolating. So mm. th through this uh, radio show, I've been able to connect with quite a number of uh, you out there. And I'm very happy to bring you onto this show. Well, it's a pleasure to have you as part of our community. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, several of us are getting together every year at an event called Sex Geek Summer Camp, oh. where all, all of us sexual educators come together. And maybe you've already heard of it, or maybe yeah. you're already part of that group. And we learn together about how to build our businesses and help more clients. So great what you're doing in Singapore. Yeah, I, I, I know that I really miss too. So I really am hoping to make it for next year. It would be so much fun to meet you there. Yeah, it'll be fun. It was it's so funny, you know, all the jokes that we have about our work, you know. It's it's just it's just so nice when uh, sex geek come together, really. <laughs> oh, it is hilarious and uh, at least the year that I went, there was a talent show that I'll never forget. <laughs> you get a bunch of sex geeks together. They've got some very unique talents. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one thing that uh, I do miss about being with the sex uh, 
educator communicate community because we are just so comfortable talking about our own sexuality and also just joking and just talking freely and openly about all things related to sexuality. That's not something I get here and there's mm. not many people who uh, get me. And um, yeah, I really miss that. Well, it'll be my pleasure to geek out with you about sex stuff on Facebook. It's really, It really is nice to be authentic and just to be able to speak your truth about sex. Um, it's relaxing. I feel like I'm with my people. So mm. you're my people, and I'm so glad to be here with you today. Thank you so much for coming. So I'm just uh, curious about your name, right? Are you French? That's such a great question. So my background is a combination of Austria, Hungary, and Ukraine. Okay. And so my name is in in German. Um, Franz Blau in German means French blue. So there's a lot of countries that are mixed in there, um, but French blue is that's is uh, how how is is yeah the the description of my name in English, but it it's, means that in in German. <laughs> nice. And am I pronouncing your name correctly, Jean or? Yes, yes. Oh, People, okay. <laughs> because, because I spell it like a pair of pants, J-E-A-N, some people in Europe will think that I'm a man because it looks like a very French name, Jean Franz Blau, but it's actually how I pronounce it is Jean Franz Blau, very American sounding. Okay, cool, good. And you were born and raised in America? That's right. I was born in Florida where many people retire at the end of their careers, and that's where I was born and raised. It's very hot there, very humid, and um, I eventually, after 17 years, moved across the country to California where I went to school and stayed. Mm. And that's where I'm calling, that's where we're talking, I'm talking from, to you from right now. I'm in Los Angeles. Mm. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you studied uh, in UCLA, and I understand that uh, you do quite a number of uh, of work and uh, sexual esteem is one big piece of what you do so could you tell us more about how you how you you know feel sexual esteem is so important that you actually name your work after it not many people do that Yes, the concept of sexual esteem has been with me for many years. And, and I appreciate when you read the way I define it, that it's the confidence and the worth of one's sexuality. And if it's okay, I'd love to share a couple more details about it, like a little more in depth. Yes. Like one way I think of it is it's confidence in the value and natural goodness of one's body, especially the genitals. And then I would add to that, it's the certainty that one's sexual and gender expression is welcomed and is valued and, and is appealing. And, and then finally, confidence that sex is a healthy and enjoyable part of the human experience for most people, that it's good for you, and so that you can feel good about feeling good about your sex life. <laughs> and so to answer your question... How did I become involved in my own life? I was really confused. There wasn't good information about, about sexuality, and yet it meant so much to me. And so through my growing up years, I, I found a lot of mixed messages about sexuality. One thing was I was looking for affection, and I thought that the only way I could get affection was through sex. So I began approaching people in situations looking for simple human affection and thinking that I had to be sexual in order to get it. And I've learned that that's not accurate, that I can split those needs up, that I can get my needs for touch and affection met. And my sexual needs are similar. There's some crossover, but it's not the same. And so that's one big part of sexual esteem for me is knowing that there's a difference. Mm. That's great. And... So I, I like what you define, feeling good about feeling good. Feel good about feeling good. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. I came up with that statement, that phrase uh, is borrowed from a group, a nonprofit called Sex Positive World. And they have a group here in Los Angeles called Sex Positive LA. And I'm a member and I do workshops with them. And so when I heard that concept, feel good about feeling good, I had to quote it. It's really it's really a perfect statement about sexuality. Mm. Yeah. So 
how does that link with uh, a confidence, sexual confidence? Well, well, I didn't even know as a younger person that sexual needs were real. I'm very clear that a person needs to drink and, and be hydrated to live. I'm very clear that one needs to eat, otherwise I'll starve. I know I need oxygen. I know that I need exercise. But sexual needs were absolutely hidden from me, and yet my body was aware and very hungry for sex. So for me, confidence is knowing that that sexual need is absolutely natural and okay. And confidence also includes that I'm allowed to pursue um, that pursue uh, um, satisfaction of those needs. So that that's a that's a pursuit that I'm allowed to have, that I'm welcome to have, and that is enjoyable. It's an enjoyable pursuit is to find experiences that satisfy me. So that's part of my confidence too. Mm, okay, great. Well, we have Jean French Blau, and she's talking about sexual esteem and sexual confidence. So far, she's talked about how sexual esteem is how we can feel good about feeling good, and sexual confidence being knowing that our sexual needs are okay, allowing ourselves to pursue our sexual needs and desires, and also to have enjoy and to have enjoyable sex. <laughs> so, more about sexual esteem after this break. Today we are with Jean Frank Blau and you can find her on her website sexualesteemwithjean.com. You can also find her on Twitter. That's twitter.com backslash sexual esteem. And also on Facebook, that's Esteem with Jean. She has this popular show called Coming Out Kink, which you were able to find on her website. She also has free lessons on her website that you can subscribe to. And I just subscribed to one of them. There are pretty much quite a number. So be sure to check out her website. So more after this break. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, intuitive life coach and energy healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. Today we have Jean French Blau, and we are talking about sexual esteem. You are listening to Arrow's Evolution on the Om Times Radio Network, and you can share the show with your friends right now by sending them the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. Our mobile player is so advanced, it doesn't need anybody to download any application. All you need is just this link. So try it now, and your friends will love it. So... Welcome back, Jean. Mm, thank you. Nice to be back. 
So we, today we are talking us about sexual esteem. Could you share with us some techniques that you use in your coaching to help people explore their curiosity? Absolutely. One thing that clients tend to present with as a problem is shame in the things that they're interested in. And that breaks my heart. I think we should all be able to express our curiosity uh, without any shame at all, uh, as long as, you know, by practicing sexuality with consent, um, with consent, that's what counts, is that everyone is consenting. So having said that, one part of the coaching process is to simply ask the client, what is it that they want to experience? And be a good listener and just hear them out. And um, and to normalize their sexual curiosity. So I had a client who was really interested in um, in exploring kinky sexuality as a submissive. So he was very interested in a dominant women, woman giving him direction, and he had a lot of shame about that. And so you know, my job is to completely fine. It's absolutely fine and wonderful that you want to honor the feminine in that way. So a big part of it is just letting them share. And then I also so I will want the client to research things that they find sexy. That could mean books, that could mean websites, that could mean events, whether online or it could mean um, actual in-person events if they live in a city that has a lot of uh, sex education events. So I really put them to the test in terms of doing fun homework. Some people call it play work, but either way, we still take it seriously that if whatever they commit to do, the next time we get together, I'll say, what did you do? What was your homework? Um, so that they feel like there's somebody behind them and with them as they go on their exploration. Those are some techniques. I like what you're sharing. So it's about acknowledging the shame that people feel, feeling, uh, giving help, supporting them in feeling that they can have permission and consent and uh, giving them little homework, research, play work, and then checking in with them so that uh, they know you're behind them and with them. That's Absolutely. Great. You know, also I noticed that people tend to carry other obstacles. One of them is body shame. Some people are ashamed that they their body doesn't look the way they think it should. And that all right there is sort of a warning sign is the word should. And what I would tell clients is they should stop shoulding on themselves in terms of body shape. Um, so sometimes it has to do with, you know, the shape of their body. They don't have enough muscles or they feel like they're overweight or underweight. And that's such a, a shame. We should, you know, it's what an opportunity to love our bodies, however they present themselves. But the other place that people tend to have shame is around their genitals. Mm. Uh, there's so much messaging in our world that teaches people to be embarrassed about this really important body part. I mean, people don't complain much about their fingertips or their eyelashes or their eyebrows or their earlobes or their elbows. But as soon as it comes to the genitals, it becomes an area of major problem. And so I will focus attention on what I call genital esteem for clients so that they can begin to open up their eyes, that their body parts are beautiful, whether it's a penis or a vulva or whether a person is intersex with a unique combination of both. Mm. So how might one begin to have greater genital esteem then? One way is to become aware of the incredible vast array of how people's genitals look. So rather than being like in a gym, you know, rather than being... It's so, it's so rare that we get to see each other's genitals, is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And so going, going online to look at healthy penises, going online to look at healthy vulvas, so that you can see the incredible amount of different hair colors and different ways people shave or, or, or what they say in the U.S. They say, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, I'll think of it in a moment, but how they like trim their hair, you know, and just get... You know, just yeah. The sculpting of the hair 
or just looking at the different size of testicles, that they're not always equally balanced one to the other, or that a penis can swing to the left or to the right or go straight out, or that a vulva can have large, larger inner lips or larger abs. Outer lips or non-existent outer lips or a clitoris that looks as large as a, as a grape or as small and hidden. All of these varieties are beautiful and acceptable like a mosaic, an artist's mosaic. I like to think of it as an artist's dream. If we were to look at all the vulvas and all the penises and intersex body parts, an artist could just have a field day, have a wonderful time drawing and coloring it all in because it's so creative looking. Yeah, definitely. You know, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I have clients coming in asking questions around their genitals and, you know, their bodily fluids and really having a lot of, well, not just shame, but I think also disgust with their own bodies. And, uh, you know, when they feel that way about their own bodies, it's very hard to imagine them being able to relax and enjoy sex. Absolutely. For me specifically, I had a fear that my vulva didn't smell well. I also had a fear because I couldn't easily look at my vulva, like Mm -hmm. I would need a mirror. I had a concern that, you know, maybe it wasn't totally clean and things like that. And there with those concerns and worries, how could I possibly relax during oral sex, right? I mean, I'm going to be nervous about it and I'll want to push the person away rather than relaxing into the delightful sensations. So um, giving myself the message that this part of my body is beautiful, is welcome and loved um, and also paying attention to my partners who often are telling me that message So, you know, I have partners who say, this part of you is beautiful. I just want to look at you. And it's my job to pay attention to that and and believe them, believe that it's true, that they find it beautiful. Yeah, I I, I kind of get what you mean, you know. Uh, When I was younger um, and my partners would tell me I was beautiful, I wouldn't believe it until several different people said the same thing. And it really took a while for me to let go of this need to keep thinking that I'm ugly and just believe them. (laughs) A big part of it is believing your partner. What I love what you said is that it wasn't until a few partners told you that. And I love the idea and thank you for acknowledging that you've had a few partners. I've had lots of partners and I'm very proud of that because it helps me to build my experience. It builds my expertise and my confidence that I know how, you know, I have a lot of different experiences with different kinds of body types and, and body, you know, temperaments. And and so I think that's a great benefit of having um, different partners over a lifetime is that I get to hear the point of view from many different people. And it is a fascinating way to get to know somebody is to get to know them in this intimate and sexual way. So to me, it's one of my favorite ways to know somebody is to know this part of them. So that's a part of my sexual esteem is I don't shame myself for having different partners. I, I consider that a place of pride. So, um, let me let me just ask what might be a tricky question. There's always this judgment around people who have too much sex and too much too many partners, and you know calling people names like slut and uh, um, promiscuous. So when when is that this line in your opinion of being having healthy sexuality and being too 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 whatever? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing's for sure. I am part of the unslut movement. Maybe you've heard of the unslut movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they have a t-shirt that says, define slut. And I really love that t-shirt because if a person were to really come up with the words of what exactly that word means, it tends to mean a woman who enjoys her sexuality or a woman with a healthy sexual appetite. And so if that's the case, then I am one, you know. So, so into your question about what do I consider normal or healthy, mm. I think it's every individual's, um, um, it's every individual's um, right to decide how much sex is right for them. Mm. 
I was part of a 12-step program for several years because I, as I mentioned earlier in your program, would go towards sex with the wrong things. And so I was looking for love. I was looking for affection. And I didn't know how else to get it. And so I would rush towards sex and I would feel, feel very, very sad or I would feel abandoned or lost. And so if sexual expression is creating hard feelings of, of pain, emotional pain, that means I need some support to find out what's going on. Is it my behavior that's causing the problem or is it my social conditioning that's causing the problem? So um, it's, it's for each individual to make those decisions. But one thing's for sure is I don't shame myself for my sexual past. Instead, I thank myself for the wisdom that I have gained from being an experienced person. Mm-hmm. Having said that, I personally consider sex a part of my practice of health. Sexual health is part of health for me. And so um, um, touching my clitoris with, with some lubrication so that I can ignite the passion and pleasure in my clitoris, I consider very good for my vulva. Making sure that my internal, that my vagina is is um, massaged either with a dildo or with a finger or with my partner's penis is also a place that I take care of my vulva. I strongly believe that if you don't use it, you might lose it. So I want to use it. Mm, yeah. And also... Uh... You know, massaging our genitals has been shown to help unlock any kind of uh, blockages or uh, free, frozen kind of numbing feelings, and it helps with hormonal balance. So it's a fantastic way to get in touch with ourselves. Absolutely. Uh, do we need to take a break? Because I would love to talk about that if we have a chance. After. Oh, yeah, sure. So we have a break coming up and we are with Jean French Blau and we are talking about sexual esteem. We just talked about our genitals on this show. And this is something that you're probably not going to hear anywhere else in the world or not much. And we're talking about genital massage and all things good about your body. So stay tuned. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Om Times Radio. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. Today we're talking about sexual esteem with Jean French Blau. And you can find her on sexual esteem with Jean Com. Just before this break, we were beginning to talk about genital massage. So, Jean, take it away. Oh, thank you so much. One of my favorite topics. So, one thing I want to share with, with your audience is there's a practice called 
O-N, which stands for orgasmic meditation, especially for people on this radio station. I thought you might appreciate uh, hearing about orgasmic meditation. Mm-hmm. To learn more about it, although it's not, it's not my company, but it's certainly a place where I've learned a lot, it's an organization called One Taste. That's O-N-E and then the word taste. T is in Tom, A, S is in Sam, T is in Tom, E, dot, U-S, one taste dot U-S. So the orgasmic meditation practice is a 15-minute practice between two people. One person's a stroker, and the strokee is the person with a vulva. The strokee undresses from the waist down, lays down in a pile of cushions and a blanket for comfort, and butterflies, her legs open, and the stroker, who's wearing gloves, um, with some lubrication, um, gently um, massages the clitoris for 15 minutes. And the, the timer uh, is very specific. And all, their, their focus is on this sensation. They're not reaching for orgasm, for climax, or anything. They're simply feeling the sensation that 15 minute practice. And, and just as you, you shared before the book, there is so much. That can happen. A person can feel numb and have that numbness melt away and have their pleasure ignite in their body and become much more vital. I've been, I've practiced for over a year and a half myself and it has changed my general esteem considerably. It's just, a, it's a part of my body that I love and cherish and respect. And so I can, that part of my body regularly absolutely a part of my health my sexual health and if I, if a partner is not going to do it I'm, I'm I will do it myself you know and, and that's a part of something that's a commitment to myself mm. yes, yes so how and, long and, did you do yeah. it every day like how long did you do it for like a, a, a duration every day for 50 minutes yeah so I practiced a few times a week for a while, but things changed considerably when I started to practice every day and I only practice every day for a short while, but my body became very orgasmic, so I began being able to have a climax within the fifteen minute time frame and it's like my body was simply learning how to just find its pleasure very quickly. Uh, so another thing for genital esteem that I recommend that has nothing to do with one taste, but I think is a wonderful practice mm-hmm. is to look in the mirror while self-pleasuring. Mm-hmm. So imagine like if you're in the bathroom or if maybe you bring a smaller mirror to your bed or to the couch where you might self-pleasure to look at your own eyes while you're self-pleasuring. So you see yourself and to also allow yourself to look at your genitals. And what I've noticed is that when I'm nearing climax, that my eyes look so beautiful. It's a way of seeing myself I never would have seen. Typically, only a partner gets to see beautiful look right before and during climax. So that's a technique that I share on my YouTube channel on sexual esteem. I call it uh, the mirroring. It's the the mirror technique. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend it for your listeners. Yeah. So as a sex educator... You know, I pretty much have had to do all the homework that I give to all my clients. And uh, this practice that you just mentioned of masturbating in front of a mirror, looking at your genitals, looking into your own eyes through the mirror is pretty intense. You feel so vulnerable and um, I strongly recommend it, even though it can seem a bit weird for some people. It is so positive because you really look at yourself imagine what a, you look at yourself and be able to see what your partner might be looking at. And you realize that you might realize the way I did that you really look truly beautiful. There's no way somebody who's uh, feeling pleasure and feeling orgasmic is going to look ugly. <laughs> so that's, that's a big takeaway for me in doing some of these practices, it makes you feel really vulnerable. And yet at the same time, when you work through it, you actually become much more positive and feel much more powerful with your sexuality. I love it. I'm so, thank you so much for being so vulnerable and sharing that too. (laughs) So we're sort of, we're sort of in that together here on the radio together. (laughs) But you know, another um, way 
to build genital esteem is to refrain from using the genitals in, uh, in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So that would include, you know, perhaps stop using the word dick to insult somebody and stop using the word pussy to insult somebody. Mm -hmm. Those are my sacred, precious body parts. And I don't want anyone using that language about my body parts. And I would encourage, you know, maybe we can shift the language, you know, I certainly, I once met somebody in the airport, if you can believe it, mm. <laughs> who, you know, we were chatting and, and he used that language mm. and I'm like, Hey, you know, I just want to pause for a moment. I'm a sex educator. And when I hear you use that language, it doesn't feel good for me. And mm. he was shocked. He was shocked and he walked away with a new insight, um, which I was really proud of because it takes courage sometimes to say, ouch. I don't like how that feels when you say that. That's great so that that's you, yeah, that's great that you said something about it because uh, often we just use words that we are used to using, and we don't even stop to think about the 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 way it means and sounds and how it actually affects us subconsciously. Yeah, so so I would even add to it that when it comes to body esteem or the you know uh, the physical esteem that I like to, I refrain from you, from insulting my body, shape, size, color, mm. type in any way. And I will not let anybody else insult me either. Mm. So, you know, here in the U S you know, there's a lot of interest in being thin. Mm. And I've had people say to me, I hate you. You're so skinny. Well, you know what? Hate in relation to my body type, no matter what you're saying, even if it sounds sort of like a compliment, is not acceptable to me. And so I'll say, you know, out, you know, it doesn't feel good. So I, I will use positive language about your body. Please use it about mine. Let's just, let's not use the word hate in, in relation to me at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's that sound? Yeah. You know, so, so setting boundaries around how I talk about my body and how anybody else does is another area of esteem for me. That's great. That's really good. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, just to share a little story that happened to me yesterday, um, I was speaking with someone and we were exploring, um, having sex really. And he talked about inviting other people into it. And I said, no, I'm, I'm totally not interested in doing a foursome. And he's like, what's wrong with you? You, you know, you need to be open-minded. And I'm like, excuse me, I'm a sexologist. I, I am open-minded, but I am entitled to having my preferences. And I'm telling you that I don't really want to do a foursome. It doesn't mean that I'm not open-minded. So I think uh, um, this kind of relates to having the ability to speak about your, your boundaries and preferences without making any apologies, even when people put it on you and make you wrong. I feel like you deserve a trophy. <laughs> for that fantastic boundary and thank you once again for your vulnerability and honesty for, for me you know now I feel really protective of you but I don't need to because you have great boundaries but for me like if my best friend told me that story and said oh I want to I, you know I really am how with each other and he chastised me for not being interested in a foursome I'd say drop this guy yeah I did. <laughs> I dropped him. Yeah. I mean, there were many other... other warning signs, weren't there? Red flags. Yeah, definitely. Somebody who doesn't respect your boundaries and keeps pushing against them, you're not going to feel safe with them. And you might end up feeling really hurt end of the day. And I don't mean just like physically, emotionally. And it's just not worth it. So it's, I think it's a big part of growing up and having had some bad experiences and then realizing what I need to do to take care of myself. So we're talking about sexual esteem here. I decided to throw in that little story. Oh, it's a story. Let me tell you, what you've just demonstrated for, you know, for the listeners and for me as well is what many people do not do, which is talk about sex before having sex. Mm -hmm. Because if you didn't have that conversation that you could have been playing with him and have, having a very nice time and then knock, 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 somebody comes to the door and he goes, oh, by the way, two people are joining us. What? Right? 
I mean, you yeah. wouldn't want that. And yet there you are in a very uncomfortable situation. So instead you talk about it and then you learn more about this potential partner. And then you get to change your mind. You know what? I thought you were a possible good partner potential. You are not. Bye-bye. And I mean, this person is just out on a great opportunity to know you better. I'm just super impressed. I, you asked me to talk about what do I feel like builds sexual esteem. Well, that's my number three thing, actually, um, which is assert and honor your own boundaries. And I love this comment, which is, I can't trust your yes if you don't have a no. Mm. If you don't have the capacity to say no thank you, then how can you trust really are wanting what we're doing? So I need to be partnered with people who understand that skill practice. That's great. I like what you're saying. I can't trust your yes if you can't say no. I can't trust your yes if you can't say no. So we all, I, you know, I encourage everyone listening to practice saying no thank you sometime in the next few days. Mm-hmm. I do a workshop called, called Cuddle Sanctuary, Cuddle Sanctuary. <laughs> and one of our first things we do, first of all, we say no talking anybody, hold and we're going to practice right now no thank you. And the way we do it is one person asks for May I hug you? The second person says, no, thank you. And then the first person says, thank you for taking care of yourself. Isn't that a wonderful? Yeah, it's uh, very affirming to practice hearing that because, you know, sometimes we, we, we get all these negative things around saying no in our heads. And when we hear that, uh, it's, it, you know, it's really very honoring. And we stop making apologies for our no's. <laughs> That's right. We just own it so much, so very freeing. Very, very freeing. The, the one thing that I learned about uh, uh, sexuality is this whole thing about consent and permission. And uh, really, the more you talk about it, the better sex can be. And that's the reason why uh, talking about sex before and after is a great way of learning and being more comfortable with your sexuality. So we, we, we're with Jean and we'll come back and uh, speak more with her after this break. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living, then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living, where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? 
Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. And this is the last 15 minutes of the show. So I definitely need to ask this question because this is the whole premise of this show. Uh, every week I ask my guests what they think is the link between sexuality and spirituality. And without further exception, I'm going to ask Jean, what do you think is um, the link between sexuality and spirituality? Um, thank you so much for asking that question. My spiritual life, I hold very dear to my heart. So one way that I think about this is that I, I reach to my spiritual guidance, my wisdom about every aspect of my life, including relationships, sexuality. And so I will certainly include um, and I, when I pray, it's typically in, in a writing, in my writing, in my morning writing. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm having a concern about my sexuality and, and for me, sex, the evolution of my sexuality, it's, it's not like, okay, I've got this all figured out. So I want to clarify that for the listeners that as an educator, it does not mean I'm done learning. I am continuing my growth and I have a feeling I'll be evolving all the way through my life. So that means that I can continue to have sexual questions, problems frictions, things I'm figuring out, I, I continue to. Having said that, that, you know, I go to spirit or I go to my higher power for answers, for help, for comfort, for wisdom, for ideas and things like that. So that's a link for me is that I, re- I reach out for spiritual help and guidance in every aspect of my life and sexuality is part of that. Mm-hmm. So um, a- another part of it too is that I consider myself um, I'm a human being having a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. And so sexuality is also part of that too. I feel like I I was born into a world that has a lot of oppression around this area of living. Mm -hmm. And so I consider it my my dharma or my path is to be an active part of the change that I wish to see in the world. And I see you that way too. Mm -hmm. So having said that, the challenges in every aspect of my life, you know, they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm. So I see that in every area of my life, including this one, that my sexual growth is tied to my spiritual growth. And I would even say vice versa, that as I become a more evolved spiritual being, it evolves in this other part of my life too. Mm. So I, I hope that that helps. I, I would want everyone who feels a spiritual connection of any sort Um, whatever that might be, that you can um, include sexuality in it. I love the concept and very much by the concept of Tantra, where the spiritual and the sacred come together in a sacred union. And and my my current partner, Brett, practices Tantra and loves the idea of like gazing into each other's eyes, breathing or moving energy in every way, including sexual. So... It's all part of the playground. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. I really like um, your, your piece around how sexual go- our sexual growth is linked to our spiritual growth. And so, so much of what my guests have shared with me have, has really helped me in expanding my appreciation and understanding of the link between the two. And I hope listeners who are spiritual as well will also begin to realize how important their sexuality is and not have it repressed or oppressed and it affects their life force energy. I love how you said that. I I really, um, I have heard certain communities of, of folks who consider themselves spiritual and care very deeply about their spirituality have shut down uh, that that um, chakra of their body. They just shut it down as if it's not spiritual. And I would beg to differ that it's a beautiful energy that can be included in spirituality. Mm, Great. 
So you've shared with us some very good practices around genital shaming and releasing of that. You talked about uh, the OM, orgasmic meditation, and you talked about uh, masturbating in front of a mirror and then looking at yourself, uh, establishing eye, eye contact with yourself in the mirror. So these are two great practices to overcoming genital and maybe body shame. Do you have any other things that you can add to improving sexual esteem? Sure. Um, one of them would be about getting one's needs for affection and physical touch met separate from sexual needs met. Uh, so for me, you know, I, I put on an event every week called Cuddle Sanctuary here in Los Angeles mm-hmm. where people can come here and receive hugs and hold hands and spoon and touch each other's hair and caress each other's cheeks full with consent. And having an avenue for non-sexual touch is a great boost in a person's sexual esteem because it helps with sexual decision-making. As I mentioned earlier, I was making some choices that really weren't working for me, um, falling in with people who didn't, weren't deserving of my attention because I was just so desperate for touch. Now I get regular, my you know, regular human needs for touch met, and therefore my decisions about sex are, are much better. And so I hope, you know, if, you know, asking for a hug when you need one, uh, from somebody who you know cares for you could be the greatest thing you can do for your sexual esteem is getting those needs for affection met. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember just now uh, when I was going through your website, I saw this little uh, log that you could do for uh, relating to touch, you know, from Mondays to Sunday, how much touch you had, how, how you rank your satisfaction when it comes to touch. I really like that. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that people think about the question, am I getting enough touch every day of the week? And so I put up on my website, it was a tweet or a Facebook post, um, a graph that you can monitor to determine are, are you touch. Hello. Yeah, I think um, uh, Jean is cut off. I can't really hear you. Oh dear. Let me try again. Make the picture. Yeah. Could you just repeat what you just said? Uh, no, I, I don't know whether it's just me. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, no, it's okay. So, Your health can improve if you get enough touch. Yeah. So, so anyway, for those of you who are interested to look up this um, exercise that... Um, I just talked about, you can go to uh, Jean's website, it's sexualesteemwithjean.com and her Twitter is uh, twitter.com, sexualesteem and her Facebook is Esteem with Jean. You can also find her on YouTube. Okay, so I, I need to announce this. Uh, you guys can sign up for her free lessons on her website by going to her website, sexualesteemwithjean.com. There are quite a number of them there. And once you subscribe, you'll start getting your free lessons. If you have coaching questions, you can actually email her at jean at sexualesteemwithjean.com. So once again, I'd like to thank our guest, Jean French Blau, for coming onto today's show. It was so, it's such a pleasure. If you can hear me, I just want you to know thank you so much for having me on. Thank you, thank you. And I would love to have you back on today's show. So once again, Jean French Blau, she has a solo show called Coming Out Kinky, a grown-up comedy which she performs in cities across the country. She is, uh, and she is a seminar leader with corporate executives and she provides workshops and coaching on kink, women empowerment, and sexual esteem. So be sure to check out her work. She's been doing this for a long time. She's highly experienced. And 
so nice to connect with a fellow sexuality educator on today's show. Next week, we have, for the third time, and now a friend, Lee Harrington, and he'll be talking about finding self-love in next week's show. This is a world where we speak about our relationships and love for others, but it is also important to examine our own relationships with ourselves when it comes to being sexual and play, playing with ourselves. So this show will examine how we get to know ourselves, internal self-abusive dialogue, building success with others through self-affirmations and taking ourselves out on dates as a way to live a more fulfilling love life through deeper awareness. And Lee Harrington for next week is, he's a he's an internationally known spiritual and erotic authentic city educator, gender explorer, artist, and award-winning author and editor. And you can find him on passionandsoul.com. But this week, for this week, be sure to check out the website of our guest, Jean French Lau, and you can find her on sexual esteem with Jean.com. Today, we learned about many things relating to sexual esteem and especially relating to our relationship with our own genitals. If you haven't done this before in your life, be sure to take out a mirror, look at your own genitals, and see for yourself how you look down there. And often we don't look down there because our eyes are up there. <laughs> so really make an effort to look at yourself. And one of the things that uh, we do at school is actually to even draw our genitals. So this has been Martha of Arrow's Evolution. Be sure to check out this show once again next week.